guys and welcome to This Is. Matt, why is the PS5 doomed to failure? I mean, I, I don't, <laughs> yeah, for me. <laughs> okay, I don't, I don't know why it's doomed. I don't think it's doomed for failure. I think it's gonna do very well. But, so, I'm the definition of a casual gamer. You play Bloons, so that's I, about right. Yes, I've gone on record multiple times that my favorite game series is Bloons Tower Defense. I'm pretty good at it. You know, so we did a, a couple videos now on like Apple Arcade and Google Play Pass, like and how they're like the mobile gaming and like cloud gaming, they're on the rise and they're they're going to be cutting into yeah. console, you know, space. And our fans did not like that. What? Are you trying to say that people on the internet were upset when we make some speculations about the future of gaming? Yeah. Yeah. They I think, well, the, I think most of the comments are just no. <laughs> but Okay, but hold on, hold on, hold on. I disagree with that though. As much as I do think that while cloud gaming has a thing, like I think consoles are the future, even consoles are getting into it, right? Like Xbox Live or Xbox Game Pass Ultimate is one of the best deals in gaming right now. Yeah. Like for 15 bucks a month, you're getting PC games, you're getting Xbox games, you're also getting Xbox Live uh, Gold, which is already worth like what? How much is gold these days? What, like eight bucks a month or something? 10 bucks a month? I wouldn't know. Well, you're a I'm, terrible gamer. I'm, I'm not, I am a terrible, terrible gamer. Well, you're a, a casual balloons gamer. I'm, no, I'm a hardcore balloons gamer. I'm a casual every other game. Okay, I get you can get a four, uh, 12 month trial or a 12 month uh, pass for Xbox Live Gold for about 40 bucks. Sure. So I mean, it's a pretty good deal. But the thing is, consoles and the entire gaming industry, I do think, is on the the edge of a huge, huge shift. So right? things are changing. Yeah, and that makes me wonder why. Should anyone care about the PS5 and the Scarlet? Dude, consoles push the industry forward. Like, there's no sure. doubt. So, a lot of times, I think when people look at things like you know PC gaming and console gaming, and then you obviously can go down to like cloud gaming and mobile gaming. But like, most of the AAA games, a lot of the the techniques, a lot of the technology is honed in the console and the PC space. Mm -hmm. Now, the console is certainly the most powerful. Or sorry. Let me rephrase. The PC is the most powerful sort of gaming platform available. However, the PC, with some limited exceptions, isn't enough to be standalone, right? Like most of the time, if a game comes out for PC, it also needs to come out for consoles, specifically with AAA games to make their budget back. So even though you might have all the extra bells and whistles on PC, ultimately it is limited by the lowest common denominator, which is typically speaking the console. You really saw this in the last generation, the Xbox 360 and PS3 sure. generation. Partially because even though they were fairly powerful consoles for back in the day, they got aged fairly quickly and specifically really quickly once they got like four, five, six years old, where the PCs at the time were way, way more powerful. So the fact that developers still had to make their games for the 360 and they could try to like bring it up to the to PC. Like I think a good example of that is when we saw PS3, PS4 uh, shift. The PS4 had like 16 times more memory. So all of a sudden we saw so many more huge open world games, sure. loading times, like all there was these, all these advantages and it came to everyone because the base sort of, the, the consoles that were holding everyone back had been upgraded. So I do think that the consoles, even though they're not the most powerful thing in the world, even though PS5 is looking pretty solid right now, but I do think that the consoles being the lowest common denominator really do help kind of push the industry forward as consoles get ray tracing, ray tracing is going to become more standard on PC, it's going to trickle down, we'll see an iPhone 13 with RTX on, like I mean all these things will happen, but I think the consoles are kind of the big, like we can't see a lot of these major improvements without consoles being on board, at least at some point. Right, okay, so, I mean, we built a PS5. It's, it's right here. Like, right behind you. Right here, right here. Yeah. Beside our wonderful This Is Play button. Yeah, hey. Hey, we're real. Hey. I mean, we built this with off-the-shelf parts yep. from AMD. Yep. Like, you know, we, we were able to get them a couple months ago, like yeah, two months so ago. Yeah, so I did a but, full video on the main channel talking about building the PS5, and essentially it comes down to this. At this point, the PS5 and the Xbox Scarlet are both official consoles, right? They're both on the record, they're both coming out almost definitely like, you know, end of next year. And because of that, we actually know some specs about them, right? So yeah. we know that they're using AMD Zen 2 processors. In the PS5 case, we know it's an eight core. We know they're using fast memory. We know that they're shipping with default SSDs, which is going to help cut down load times. And we also know a little bit about the graphics because it is based on Navi, which is something that you could buy in the PC space. So what I wanted to do was essentially buy all the components I could, which were as close as possible to the PS5 and test to see how much more powerful it would be. Which is not something that you usually do because a lot of times consoles are using like weird, like customized components. And that's certainly going to be the case this, this generation. 
This is the first time in a very long time that we've actually been able to build a PC which is, before the consoles come out, a very similar spec to test on. But we did that you know, a couple months ago. Yeah. PS5, Scarlet, they're what, 18 months out? I'd say probably closer to 12, 12. to 14 at this point. That's still, that's a long time sure. in hardware. I mean, like, by the time the PS5 and Scarlet come out, they're already outdated. They're, you know, like, there's mm, gonna be... Well, I guess. Like, there's gonna be Navi 2, whatever. Like, I don't, it, Maybe. It, it won't be a whole new architecture, but, <laughs> but, but like, the, the pro, like, what we, what we're speculating, and we underclock this, we did, yeah. To, so, so there's going to be something even more powerful available. Sure. So, I mean, one, the question is, if I need power, why not just grab a PC? Sure, of course. But you can always build a PC or buy a PC. For, for me personally, though, my biggest thing is, do these specs matter anymore if yes. cloud gaming is going to yes. be a, a bigger Still thing matters. in the future? Still matters. Okay, so let's take Stadia versus something like PS5, for example. Yeah. So with the PS5, what you're getting, or what you should be getting, everything we know, is a mid to upper range gaming PC of today. Sure. Right? So eight core processor running it, decent clocks, um, graphics which should be pretty well capable of playing 4K 30 and 4K 60, theoretically 8K, but I highly doubt we'll see that. Um, but you're seeing a console with an SSD, you're seeing something which is very, like, Probably equivalent to say, I know for this system that we built, if you were trying to build it right now, it's like twelve hundred dollars or so. Mm -hmm. I'd say by end of next year, you're looking at you know a thousand dollar PC or something. Sure. Right. But when you look at that compared to say Stadia, right? Which Stadia is actually on paper a more powerful system. It's in the cloud, but each of the individual like kind of console nodes are very very powerful. They're like proper high end PCs, also based on AMD. But I guess the thing that I really sort of take away from the idea with the PS5 and why it doesn't have to be cutting edge is because consoles never are. Consoles are not, like, if you want the bleeding edge, the absolute best kind of tech that you can get your hands on, PC, of course, obviously. I mean, yeah. PC's had ray tracing for, what, like a year now? Yeah. But, that being said, it's not the volume thing, right? Like, it's not, it doesn't matter, like, developers are not going to make these insanely high-end games for 2% of the PC audience. They're going to make, or 2% of the gaming audience. They're going to do it for 60%, which includes PS5s and Xboxes and stuff. So, yeah, these consoles are not going to be the super ultra high-end, but, I mean, consoles have never been the highest end, right? Like, when the PS4 came out, it was a very good value. It was, again, probably equivalent to a seven, eight, nine hundred dollar gaming PC, but that being said, it was obviously much cheaper, and because there's so much more optimization that can go on on consoles. I mean, look at like look at some PS4 games. Like if you look at a PS4, which is equivalent to again a mid-range, mid to upper range game PC from 2013, you look at like something like Spider-Man or Uncharted running on that. It's sure. incredible what they've been able to pull out, right? So I think it's a little bit of a combination of having years to optimize and get absolutely everything out of these consoles, and also the fact that the consoles don't have to be the highest of high-end specs. But as long as they're a big step up, that's sort of the floor that everyone can expect to develop on for the next generation. So, which is all great on paper, and my argument is also on paper, but that means every, like, every time you want to go to a next generation, millions of people have to upgrade their system. Yeah. Which is great for a developer like Sony or Microsoft selling new, new consoles. New consoles. Sure. Yeah. But with proper cloud gaming, uh, you know, Stadia is the closest thing right now. I mean, X, the Xbox is, has their... Xbox is kind of is, up it's, in the air. It's yeah. there, but like, you know, if with, with the, the true promise of cloud gaming is that you can play these AAA titles mm -hmm. with a potato because yeah, literally, all yeah. that processing is done server-side. Yes. And so, you know, you, you don't have to have the top-of-the-line specs anymore. Everyone can have literally an iPad, and they, I could be playing AAA title. I did it with, with Stadia. Yeah. So you just played it in Chrome. I was playing Assassin's Creed. Now, that means only Google Stadia has to upgrade their system yes. for Or the cloud every, gaming service. Whatever, choice, yeah. yeah, right. Stadia is just the example. It's the house, you know, what people know. But like, that means everyone instantly can have access to ray tracing, yeah. can have access to high frame rate. Obviously, if their monitor supports it. But it's... It, to me, it's just the scalability of cloud gaming has such a better promise than consoles ever will. But there are fundamental issues with cloud gaming. Sure. Right? I mean, like one of the big ones is obviously you have to have that solid connection. Right. And while, yes, internet connections do get better year over year, people's houses start getting gigabit, you get lower latencies, but there's still a huge sort of bottleneck. Now, even if you say that 50% of gamers have a fast enough internet connection to stream 4K, like high frame rate games over something like Stadia. 
Well, not only are you missing 50%, but that's at your house, right? Sure. Like, sure, you can throw out things like 5G, which are cool and theoretically very capable, but are they actually going to be usable? Is that really something that is going to make a lot of sense when you're on the go and you're trying to play a game and all of a sudden you drop out of a 5G spot and all of a sudden you're down to 3G and your, your quality crashes? Like, not only do you have the millions and millions of variables that can kind of throw your game off, but also you have to consider that, like, you have to, like, bandwidth caps, like, I don't think the world is ready for a full cloud gaming experience. And I think it makes sense in your home with a good internet connection. If you're at your home with a good internet connection, why are you not playing on like a PS5 or a PC or something? So I know, for, which is a good point. I, I don't think that the internet connections are quite there yet. But with, Sometimes they are, it's just not everywhere. Right, but I mean, this, the argument can be made, you know, all right, am I playing a AAA title at, a, at the airport? No. It's, Pro and con for both of them. Yeah. You wouldn't be playing at the airport anyway, but you, like you say, you might as well play it on a console at home. But for someone like me, I like being able to play it anywhere in my home. A console is yeah. tied to you know, the living room TV, the bedroom TV. With well, there's local streaming though. You could still have it running on a native machine in your house. But that you still have then the same issues of No, but cloud. It's, it's, not, it's not as bad because you're not going out to the cloud. Like, so for local streams, so say like Steam or Xbox or whatever the case is, you're just streaming over your local network. There are far fewer issues there. Generally speaking, I actually feel pretty confident with that. It's when you go out to a cloud server running somewhere so else, have, you have like, you know, hundreds or thousands of miles of latency and all this kind of stuff. That's where it gets more complicated. If you're in your own house, I actually feel pretty good about local streaming. I have the, the PS4 stream connect or uh, whatever that, that app is. That's never worked for me in my own home. So mainly because the upload gets, oh, yeah, PS4, gets, capped, yeah. Yeah. gets capped on both of them because it's sending, it's sending it both ways. Yeah. My, my point though is still like, my, you know, I can put it on my phone, I can put it on my, my iPad, I can take it to any TV I want. Yeah, that's, that's great. But like with the local streaming, you can't do that. You, you can, well, yeah, well, that's you, exactly you need, what you can do. You need extra devices. Well, it depends. I mean, like for like Windows PCs, there's apps for Xbox. Like, I mean, there's obviously edge cases, but generally speaking, like yeah. with something like Stream with Steam, it's pretty easy to play a game. Like your computer's upstairs, and you can play it downstairs on your TV with like a cheap computer, or even like those old like Steam Links or whatever. But, but I think I think you're you're you're, you're we're getting in the weeds. I, I guess. think you're accidentally arguing though for cloud gaming because no, I'm not not cloud gaming. No, no this is local know. streaming. There's two different but, things. But local streaming is just the baby brother of cloud gaming. Yeah, no, but that's, I agree though. So I like, totally agree. When, when you're, because it's just scaled up. But scaling up is not as simple as just saying like, it'll be fixed, right? Like you can make a, a PS5, which is more powerful than the PS4, done, right? Yeah. Local streaming is not crazy difficult. It's been done before, it works really well. But when you get out of that, like sure, you can, if you live fairly close to like a Google data center with a bunch of Stadia machines, they're all spun up, you have a fast internet connection sure. to, that, uh, to that data center, there's no reason why you can't get a very solid Right. experience. But if you're in that limited experience, what's the point of cloud gaming when I could just turn around and I could be on a PS5 or something, right? Like I think the real draw for me with cloud gaming is the fact that yes, you get the hardware out of the way. That is an advantage. I'll totally give you that. It's much cheaper to buy a $200 HP stream and play on that forever versus upgrading your PS5 or your, mm -hmm. your PC or whatever. But beyond that, what the problem is, is that the cloud gaming idea and, and the promise is it's going to work everywhere, right? You're going to be like, you know, in the subway on the way to work, or whatever the case is, and you're gonna be playing your games, when real world internet connections are okay, but they're too spotty for anything resembling a AAA experience right now. So I'd say the, the issues that you might have with local streaming are 100 times worse when you get out in the, in the middle of the world. Like sure, you might have a little 5G hotspot, I'm like oh, I finally found this little sliver of 5G, I'm gonna play my, my 4K game, but like that's not realistic for most people. That's, that's, that's where I'm coming from. That's assuming it's, you're trying to play a AAA title every time. Then what about like all the indie titles that don't have that on the device? Right. So I don't need cloud gaming. That's but it's part of the like it's oh with, if like, it's Stadia, included in with yeah, like yeah, Stadia. Sure. That's part of the service. That's fair. So you know like who's playing a AAA trying to play a AAA title on the subway? If if you could, that'd be awesome. Yeah. But you can't do it now anyway. With with cloud gaming, you at you least can do have it with your gaming PC. So you take on the you, like don't be one of those guys who brings like your whole rig to <laughs> to uh, Starbucks or whatever. Hey man, but you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Like I don't know, it's just I mean, okay. I will give you one bit of of 
of credence to the cloud gaming idea, and that comes to multiplayer gaming. Because right now with multiplayer gaming, it actually is a little bit of a weird process because everyone has their own computers. There's a host, either one of the people or in the cloud that's the host. So data is having to be sent back and forth and back and forth, mm -hmm. which adds not crazy amounts of latency, but I mean, it's certainly there, so right? And some. it's all the same issues you might have with cloud gaming are pretty much replicated when you play online, right? If you're playing a game yeah. of CSGO and you need, you know, some guy's got 10 milliseconds of ping, you've got 50, then you're playing right. at a huge disadvantage. But one of the advantages with cloud gaming is that if that if everything is being done in the in the cloud, everyone's pretty much fighting on an equal playing field because like the latency between systems is oh this stadium node is talking to this one it's six feet away right, right. like there's no real latency there it's just your latency to the actual server. Sure. That's one advantage, and there's also other advantages. I mean, you're getting like pretty much instant load times, and these Stadia computers specifically. I know we talk a lot about Stadia, but are very powerful. Like right. these are I mean, very very high end machines. There's it's, it's powerful and it's fast as we talk about like the new PS5. SSDs are going to, you know, they're talking about like uh, with Spider Man that all that open world stuff, which is taking 15 seconds to load on PS4, is going to be less a than a second. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't matter because that, like, you're looking at machines that are four, five, ten times faster than that. I don't know if Stadia is that much, but you can certainly imagine you buy a PS5 next year, 2020, it's not replaced for five or six years. Whereas Stadia might have two or three major upgrades during that time. Right. So I'll give you that. But then, okay, so the upgrade part, I think, is another part of cloud gaming, which is interesting, but I'm not so convinced. Because as a gamer, I don't think anyone is all that turned off, or at least most hardcore gamers are not turned off by the idea of upgrading their hardware on a semi-regular basis, sure. right? If you've got a PC, you're going to like you know, upgrade your graphics card every few years, or buy a new like CPU. Or if you're a console gamer, you're going to buy that PS4, you're going to play it for a few years, and then, oh, you know what, that PS4 Pro is looking pretty good. Or, oh, the PS5. Like, it's not crazy to think that three, four, five years down the line, you might be ready for an upgrade. So while, yes, it's more expensive to do that, but it, it depends, right? I think a lot of people still appreciate the superior gaming capabilities of that versus paying for cloud gaming, which the second that, you know, you stop paying for your subscription or whatever the case is, you might lose your games. Obviously, Stadia is not the case. You actually purchase your game and you still play them as long as Stadia is still running. But I, I just... I don't know, I, I see the value proposition. I, I just don't, it's not that appealing to me. I don't know. It's, I just, I like, I like. You still need hardware at the end of the day to play cloud gaming too. Not really. I mean. I I, something. I mean, you should probably play on a Chromecast for Stadia, so. I definitely played it on like my Mac, which yeah. I know, I got a Mac. I, if I want a game, I'm not going to go buy a gaming PC if, I'm, if my whole ecosystem is on Mac. That's totally fair. And so I was playing a AAA title on Mac seamlessly today. Like. So yeah, cloud gaming as a whole is definitely not there, but we have something that's working good enough right now that just says it's only going to get better from, from here. And I think it's, gonna, it, it's something that can scale better and faster than consoles ever can. So, you know, if, yeah, a lot of people have horrible hard-lined internet. You know, they're using cable companies and ISPs, they're using old copper lines. Mm -hmm. That infrastructure is not going to get updated anytime soon because that's millions, if not billions, of dollars for a company to do. But what's really easy is if they started doing like a 5G modem in a house. And suddenly, that's, that's 5G is better than most people's Wi Fi. Absolutely. Or even hard lined LAN. So that's something that can be done in the next year or two. Ah, uh, it's a little longer than that. Will it? Will it? No. Yeah. Could. Can it? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, we're fortunate. We live, you know, we're in LA. We have there's lots of options. lots of options yeah. here for us. So, obviously, in other parts of the world, not so much. Even in other parts of the country, not so much. I mean, where I'm from in upstate New York, we were through the roof when we had 100 megabit internet. Yeah. But, um, like it's it's. In a year, we went from having that 100 megabit internet, we now have an ISP that does gigabit. And that's literally 10 times the performance of that yeah. in a year versus incremental for a hardware, the hardware change. So I'm not going to argue with you that cloud gaming has a lot of potential in the future, and especially when you combine that with the idea of these subscription services and everything. But I'm saying that for the foreseeable future, three years plus, sure. I think most people should still play on hard consoles such as PS5s, and Xboxes, or play on PC. I think that still is going to be the superior gaming 
choice. I don't think that there's still like, there's still too many compromises with cloud gaming. And I certainly don't think that for this generation, you should throw your PS5 in the garbage no. and go buy a Chromecast with Stadia. I just don't think it's there yet. But I also just don't think, is it worth it to get a PS5 day one when it's six, even maybe $700? Well, that's a whole different conversation if it's actually it's, gonna be that expensive, yeah. Because when we, I mean, how many, how many phone videos have we done? A lot. Like dozens, Quite hundreds. Quite a few. The number one comment for every phone video is, this is too expensive for me. Yeah. I never get that comment because it's the same people like, oh, just buy, you know, buy a new gaming PC or buy, um, or buy a new console, whatever, for gaming, which are, it doesn't matter whether it's a $300 Pocophone, $1,000 uh, Apple, like iPhone. People are saying like, a phone's too expensive, but if a phone can do everything for you, including in this case, gaming on AAA, yeah, it's not the best to do, you know, it's not the same as a 55 inch TV. But if you can game on a phone, like what's the point of a $600 gaming console that's doing the same thing? But then I guess I would argue that if that's the future you see, mobile gaming is getting better and better that is running natively. Look yeah. at like Apple Arcade, right? Apple Arcade has a lot of games which are, if not AAA, they're getting close. Let's say, let's, let's say double A. Do, do, I don't know if that's I think a there's thing. actually a definition. Is there for like, a double, okay. I don't know. But don't regardless, know. like games that are like looking really good and they're getting like they're running natively on the phone, yeah. right? Like phones are getting to the point where if consoles are bumping up, you know, every five years they double in or triple. I mean phones are like doing that almost every year, right? right? So there's definitely a point in which phones are going to be, if not caught up, but much, much closer, which I do think kind of removes some of the argument that you need cloud gaming. I'll throw the switch at you. Sure. This look at the Wii U, right? The Wii U was like very much a proto switch, right? Yes. Like it was very early version. And a few years later, they were able to really get rid of the console, shrink the gamepad down, and put everything in it. And that is almost entirely because of the mobile technology inside. You can imagine, a little bit farther down the line, why couldn't you have a portable Xbox or a portable PlayStation? Or why couldn't your phone have all the, the PS4 exclusives when they cut some giant deal with Sony or whatever? Like, I see that as being a better and more realistic future of everything is like switches and phones with docks and stuff versus cloud gaming. Because I, I get it, cloud gaming seems cool, but at the end of the day, these companies want to sell hardware too. And right. it's just like the, the native experience, I don't think will ever be better on cloud. Like I think for multiplayer games, maybe. Maybe you might get a little bit of a better experience when you have those perfect sort of like setups. But I, I, I think I, so I would bet more on mobile than anything this, else. This is a thing that is pretty much every, every, like we get to any industry is, does it have to be better or does it have to be good enough? Where, where, does, where does the convenience Mm. outweigh the better performance. But isn't it so, more convenient to not have to deal with your ISP giving you a, you're, you use too much 5G data this month, stop playing balloons so much? Maybe, I mean, <laughs> maybe. We'll see, but you know, that's something we don't, we don't know. It's like, you're right, it probably will happen just yeah. because ISPs suck. Mm -hmm. But we don't know that that's gonna happen. Yeah, you raise like, your whole premise here is that you're betting on ISPs to not suck. <laughs> well, yeah. So yeah. Like, I think I just won this argument. I think it's over now. It's, I may be a casual <laughs> gamer, but I am a power user when it comes to downloading and you know uploading stuff. I've never gotten a bandwidth cap. I don't have Comcast, so mm. yeah. But it's you know what happens when we have 8K gaming with ray tracing. Look at the day one patches on a console right now. You 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 wait you, like you get the course, game yeah. and then suddenly oh yeah it's a five hour download because we need to download the entire game again onto your console. Yeah. That's that's eliminated with cloud gaming. But yeah, yeah. like so th there's the key convenience factor there, but if I'm a developer and I'm looking at and this is why so many people are hopping on like you know when you look at like why developers only develop for iOS, if I have to develop a game to reach as many people as possible, mm -hmm. something like Stadia looks super appealing to me. Because if it gets if, the, if, if it yeah. obvi obviously it, if it gets traction, but because I don't I know the hardware to go for all these people. Like obviously that it's whatever the majority is, but they don't need to redevelop something for Xbox. They don't need to make a, a port for PS4, and they don't need to make it for PC. If you just say, oh, we're going to put it on a cloud service, which can be used on any device. Yeah. You know, so that's appealing to me as a developer. Again, obviously that's banking on something being popular enough to have that masses, but you know, if, like why, why would I spend resources to develop it three times if I can do it once and be done? 
That's fair. I think there is a lot of cross-platform capability in the fact that Stadia and the consoles and a lot of gaming PCs are running like AMD hardware does make that a little yeah. bit simpler. I know I've heard, like I think it was Ubisoft, they're mostly focusing on Stadia for upcoming games. And they're like, oh yeah, it's not that much more expensive to like throw Stadia in is one of the things we yeah. support. But I don't know, I think regardless, it's a super interesting time to be a gamer. Like, no joke. I think there's a lot of really cool stuff going on between subscriptions, which doesn't sound good, but some of these are like legitimately interesting. There, there are pros to subscription. Yeah. Like, you know, we just did the video last week about um, our uh, Apple Arcade and Game Pass. Yeah. And you know, there's some really good games on there for five bucks a month for Apple Arcade. The the Game Pass is, you know, if you play literally any Android game, is it's worth it. It's worth it. Obviously, you don't own them, which is a downside. You have to, you know, keep paying in order to play those. But yeah. like. You're also getting like all these updates. You're getting, you know, ac like huge access. So there, there's pros and cons to that. I mean, I personally like to, to own my own games. Yeah. But that's another reason I don't like console gaming is I've switched consoles throughout my, you know, my life. I, I've bought Grand Theft Auto Five like four or five times. So like for PS, uh, PS3, PS4, PC, Xbox. Um, Why? Like. Cause I, that's what I'm playing at that time. Oh, so you just bought it for every console. So you got a new console or PC, you're like, oh, you yeah. know what? Time to play GTA again. Yes. Yeah, right, that's fair. So you, well, know, you, can, you, you can just sign up for Stadia and stream it to all of your devices and you'll be living the happy, perfect life. Exactly. And I'll be playing PS5 and Xbox and PC because that's the superior way to game. I think we should leave it there. Yeah, fair. What do you guys think about this format? I'm really curious to know. We've been talking about this for a while and this is something that I think we like to talk about in the office a lot of like the different like ideas of gaming stuff and specifically with Xbox and PS5. There's so many things that are coming out right now that I think it's super interesting to look into what exactly gaming is going to look like in three, five, seven years. I'm curious, what do you guys think is going to be the winner of the next generation of gaming? Is it cloud gaming, is it mobile, is it PS5 and Xbox, PC? Are we all just going to stop playing games and go back to tic-tac-toe? Let me know in the comments below. Matt, would you like to add anything? Because I can't make fun of you since you're already here. Can you do an outro for me? Thank you so much for watching this episode of This Is. If you want to tell me how much you hated my opinion, just go ahead and leave it in the comment. <laughs> oh, they you will. You can <laughs> check out some other uh, episodes here. But yeah, thanks for, thanks for tuning in. That was a good one. I think yeah. they're going to definitely let you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>